What's going on everyone? I've gotten several requests for this video, so I'm gonna do it for you today. I'm gonna to show you every program setting on the Wired Freedom e-bike. uses the LCD 8H display. And if you don't know what the Wired Freedom is, check it out. It's got 60 volt battery, 40 amp controller, rear hub motor that peaks over 2000 watts, and it's pretty darn fast. I've had it up close to 40 miles an hour. There's a couple settings you need to unlock to get there. Today, I'm gonna go through every single setting on this bike, show you how to program it and what it means. Let's take a look. All right, first things first, this bike will ship to you as a class two e-bike, meaning it's gonna be set up in the display to go 20 miles an hour and have about 750 watts. If you go in there and unlock things and change the settings, you do so at your own risk. Let's use some common sense, guys. Don't be whipping down the trail on this bike at 40 miles an hour. Take it easy if you're on bike pass, and if you're gonna open this thing up, it really should be off-road use only. So I'll walk you through every setting, but change things at your own risk. I think where a lot of people get into trouble with the settings on this bike and this display, that's what it looks like, LCD 8H, KT LCD 8H display. And there's other programming videos out there for that display, but those are for bikes using a Bafang motor. This wired bike does not. This uses a hang tie motor, one with the uh, metal gears inside instead of the nylon ones, they have like a metal outside ring on them. So it's a little bit more robust. This thing, I mean, <laughs> this is a powerful motor, guys. Way more than 2,000 watts going to this bike. You can lift the front wheel in the air on takeoff. So let's get into the settings. I'll show you what you uh, might potentially want to change. All right, everyone, let's get into the settings. And the way you do that is I'm going to power off first. And then we got to power back on. And within five seconds, you got to hold the up and down arrows together simultaneously. So we'll hold those down. And it takes you into the main menu of all the programming. Wired actually suggests that you hold the brake lever while you do that, because if you, you mess up and you don't hold these down at the same time and you end up just holding the down arrow by itself, you could put the bike into walk mode and it could take off on you. So you gotta make sure you're holding these up and down arrows simultaneously. Now, as you can see, this display is really easy to program. You can just toggle through all the different settings using the up and down arrows. And then the way you select the setting is you just hit the, the center button. You know, you could basically have just three buttons here, up, down, and the middle button. And that's how you uh, select. So if I go into the first setting, which is your speed limit setting, and you select it, you can go up and down. And the, the max is 72. So what is that, like 44 and a half miles an hour, roughly? It'll come set to you with this at like 32 kilometers an hour, which is like 20 miles an hour. So this is your speed setting, the first one, L-I-M, the limit of speed. So you can set that as high as you would like. 72 is the max though. And once you tap the center button again, it'll be locked in place. And all this information is directly from Wired. I reached out to them and asked them to verify all these different settings. So these are the exact settings you should be using for the setup of this Wired Freedom bike. The next setting down is the tire dimensions. It's set at 29 inches from them. I would leave it there because I found that to be very accurate for the speedometer. Uh, even though these are 26 by four tires, they're actually you know from the ground to the top of the tire about 29 inches. So 29 is the correct setting to use here. If you do change this, your speed's probably not gonna be very accurate on the display. The next setting down is the units. It comes set at three. And three means it's gonna show you speed in miles per hour and temperature in Fahrenheit. If you change this to a one, it'll be kilometers an hour and Celsius. If you change it to a two, it's gonna be kilometers per hour in Fahrenheit. So I'm in the USA, I like to see Fahrenheit and also miles per hour, so I'm gonna leave mine at three. Down to the next, now we're into the P settings. So P1 comes set at 80, and this is the motor gear reduction ratio. And you need to multiply the gear reduction ratio by the number of magnets in the motor. Now it's a hang tie motor, Again, not a Bafang, hang tie motor in the Wired e-bike. And it has a five to one gear reduction ratio, which means the motor has to spin five times in order for the wheel to spin once. And the motor uses 16 magnets. So you multiply five times 16, you know, equals 80. That's, that's why this setting is at 80. So I really wouldn't change this. Wired tells me they get a lot of calls about this. Their speed is not reading correctly on the bike and it's because people watch other YouTube videos and it's, for a Bafang motor and they change the setting and it messes it all up. So just leave this setting where it's at at 80 and your speed on your display should be correct. Moving along to P2, this comes set at one. This is the motor pulse magnet setting. This is how many magnets are on the motor plate and their bike has one magnet on the plate. This is another setting that P2 
people change incorrectly from watching other videos online and they, they call wired because the speed's jumping all around. And that's why, just leave this at one. On down to P3. So P3 is the setting for the relationship between your pedal assist and your throttle. They recommend a setting of one. That way you've got full power out of the throttle no matter what your pedal assist level is. If you select P3 to be zero, then your throttle will be limited by your pedal assist setting. So if your pedal assist is at one, you're only gonna get 20% power out of your throttle. If it's at pedal assist two, throttle's only gonna have like 40% power and so on. So if you leave this at one, you're always gonna have full power out of the throttle at all times. That's how I like to ride. I just want, when I twist the throttle, to have access to all the bike's power. So I leave my P3 setting at one. Moving on to the P4 setting. This setting determines if the throttle will work without pedaling first. So Wired sends you the bike from the factory with this set to zero. And that means you can use the throttle anytime. You don't have to be pedaling. You can ride this just like a motorcycle. If you change this, you toggle it over to one, then you're gonna have to be pedaling for the throttle to be active. I like having the throttle active regardless if I'm pedaling or not, so I leave mine at zero. On to setting P5. This comes set at 16. And this is the setting for the voltage meter on the display, and they recommend setting this at 16. The controller doesn't know what size battery you've got in the bike, and it'll work with 36 volt, 48, 52, 60, whatever. And you know the controller is always trying to estimate how much power is left on the battery with its little indicator bars. This that's where this setting comes in. This is letting the controller know what size battery is in the bike, so it can accurately show the battery bars. It's just an estimate really. Sometimes setting this to 17 or 18 might be more accurate, but they believe the most accurate setting to be 16 for P5. Now onto the C settings. C1 should be set at seven. This is the setting for pedal assist sensor on the crankbase. They said, just leave it alone. Don't touch it. <laughs> Different settings are gonna make the pedal assist not work right. So leave C1 at seven. On to setting C2. This should be set to one. This is for the type of controller being used. It's either sine wave or square wave. They use a KT square wave controller. Setting of zero would be for sine wave. So leave this set to one. All right, on to setting C3. This is the setting that tells the bike what level of pedal assist you wanna be in when the bike is powered on. I've got it set to one, but you can set it to zero, one, two, three, four, five and it's gonna power on in that level, whatever level you select. So if you, it comes from wired e bike set at zero. So when you turn the bike on, pedal assist will be at zero. That's probably the safest because you're not gonna accidentally engage the pedal assist or the throttle. But you can, if you want to power on and be in pedal assist five, you can set that right here. Or if you put it in uh, eight, the setting of eight, the bike will automatically power on in whatever pedal assist you left it in when you turned it off. So if you were in three, and you shut the bike off, when you hit the power button, it'll come back on and pedal assist three. So um, I'm gonna change mine back down to, I had it at one, but I'm gonna put it back down to zero. That way, whenever I turn this bike on, it'll be in pedal assist zero and nothing's active until I you know, bump that up manually to pedal assist one. The C4 setting controls the maximum wattage for the throttle. So you can set limitations in here on the percentage of power coming from the throttle. You got settings zero through four. Uh, they send it to you set at zero. I leave it at zero because that means you are getting full power out of the throttle all the time. So I leave that at zero. On to setting C5, and this is an important one. So this setting is the maximum power that the controller allows going to the motor. I've got it set at 10, <laughs> which means it, this bike is giving me everything right off the line. They're going to send you this bike with this setting set at, I believe four is the factory setting. So that's about 750 watts it's giving you. I bumped it up to 10 just to give everything out of the bike. You can set it also to zero, one, or two. Any of those settings, zero, one, or two is gonna give you, still give you full power, but it's gonna be a slow ramp up. It's gonna be like gradual start. So if it's hitting too hard off the line for you, just put this into zero, one, or two on the C5 setting. It should be a slower takeoff. But like I said, I like the hard hit off the line. I can pull the front wheel in the air <laughs> when I have it set at 10. I like all that power up front all at once. So I keep my C5 at 10. Going down to C6, this is just the screen brightness. I think most people just keep this up at five, the brightest level it can be. 
Um, so we'll just leave that there locked in at five. C7 is for cruise control. So if we go in here, you can see you can toggle between zero and one. They, it comes set at one, um, which will allow cruise control to be activated by the rider. If it's on zero, you can't use cruise control. And when you have it set at one, you just keep a constant speed, either with pedal assist or throttle, 12 miles an hour or greater. And when you hit whatever speed you want to lock it in at, you hold the down arrow on the display for like three seconds. Then you'll get an icon on the speedometer and it'll show cruise control and you're locked in at that speed and you can you know, cancel it just by hitting the brake lever. So C7 gives you cruise control if it's set to one. If you set it to zero, you won't have a cruise control option. On to setting C8. C8 is to turn off or on the internal motor temperature sensor and they don't have a sensor in their motor. So just leave it set to zero, meaning that it's turned off. Setting C9 is for a password. Just leave this set to zero, which means you're not using a password. If you toggle it to one, it's gonna ask you to set a password, and then you're not gonna be able to turn on this bike without first entering the password. And they said, just leave this alone, because if you set a password and you forget it, there's no reset. You just have to buy a new controller. <laughs> there's no way to, to get it back. So. I'm not going to turn on a password. I would recommend you just leave this at zero as well. Setting C10 is the factory reset. So if you want to reset to factory default settings, you would toggle this from a no to a yes, but I don't want to do that. So we're just going to keep it at no. On to C11. They say this one is for copying one controller settings to another. I don't know why you would need that. I mean, if you wanted to copy these settings to another controller, you could just take a picture of this with your phone and input it in the other controller. I don't know, but I would just leave this set at zero unless you have some reason you want to copy these settings to another controller somehow. I, I've never done that myself. The C12 setting comes set at four. This is the minimum voltage cutoff setting. If you lower that setting, it's going to allow your battery to dangerously low levels of discharge before it shuts down. So in increasing this setting is gonna make your controller shut down quicker, even though you've got plenty of voltage in the battery. So just leave this alone at four. Setting C13 is for regenerative braking. That's a feature usually only for like direct drive motors. This is a geared motor. So, you know, you don't have the ability to use regenerative braking on this bike. Just leave this set at zero. C14, this is the pedal assist tuning setting. And it's just got levels of one, two, and three. Um, I keep it set at two. That's how it comes from the factory, set at two. And this is just telling you how much assistance in watts that the uh, pedal assist is gonna provide. So if you've got this number set to one, so let's toggle down to one, and you put the bike in pedal assist one, you're gonna get like 120 watts of power. If you set this to two, where it comes from the factory, and put the bike in pedal assist one, you're gonna get like 230 watts. And if it's th set to three, you're gonna get like 350 watts. So it's just kind of incremental increases in power for your pedal assist. I just keep mine set at two. And for the C15 setting, comes from the factory at six. This is the motor protocol setting. And they said, just don't mess with it. Leave it where it is. And then L1, L2, L3, L4, they didn't really know what these were for. I guess maybe they're just not used um, on this bike setup, but they should be zero, 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 and five. So I wouldn't touch those. And just to kind of sum these up, I would say never mess with P1, P2, C1, and C2. Leave those four alone. Uh, P1 setting, that was for the gear reduction ratio. P2 was for the motor magnets. And then C1 was for the pedal assist sensor on the crank. And C2 is for the type of controller. You're just not gonna wanna monkey with any of those settings. What you're probably gonna mess with if you're like me is you're gonna mess with this, the limit of the speed, right? You're gonna bump that up to 72 kilometers an hour to get full power and probably the C5 setting where I set mine to 10 and got the max power. Um, you, maybe you go with one, two, or three where you, or zero, one, or two where you're getting a slow start if you want the slow start but still get full power. But I think those are probably the, the couple that people are gonna mess with. The, Limit of speed and then also the C5 setting giving you the controller amps. But there you go. There's a rundown of all the settings 
you need to know for the Wired Freedom Bike. Hope you found that helpful. If you did, consider hitting subscribe for more e-bike information. Talk to y'all later. Thanks.